All right, troops. One or two you have asked me to go over circular motion with you. But really, before we do that, there's something we have to point out. The importance of something that is key, vital, core to the idea of circular motion. And that is pi. Pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter. Or, if we consider the radius of a circle, then the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. There is no getting away from pi. What is that magical number, pi? Well, if you want it as a decimal, it's about 3.14. There's nothing we can do about it. That's what it is. It's universal. Get used to it. There are two pi radiuses around a circle. One or two people asking me to go over circular motion in real simple terms. The reason for that is they don't like the radiant. Do we need to use radiance? Well, the answer is yes and no. Do we need to use radiance? Let's have a look at this wee example. I'm getting the impression from some people they don't like radiance. Think about this. We've got this wee example. A mass is whirled around someone's head. This wee guy, he's got a mass on the end of a bit of string and he's whirling it about in a circle. Length of the string, 0 0.6 metres. And it completes 10 revolutions in 8 seconds. Now, I, this is realistic because I've just tried it in my living room. So, 10 revolutions in 8 seconds. Here's the question. Right? What is the... Total angular displacement of the mass. Now, before we do that, let's talk about what do we actually mean by angular displacement. You should know about displacement from last year. Displacement is really a measure of how far have you gone from the start to the finish. Well, angular displacement is how far have you turned from the start to the finish. So, in this case, it's 10 revolutions. Now, that is the angular displacement. 10 revs. Let's just leave it as 10 revs just now. What's the angular velocity? Angular velocity is just a measure of what speed are you turning at? Well, it's doing 10 revolutions in 8 seconds. So what will it do in 1 second? It's angular velocity. And by the way, the symbol that we use for angular velocity is a Greek letter called Omega. Okay? It's a lowercase w, but we call it Omega. The angular velocity is just a measure of the angle that you turn through per second. The symbol we use for angle is theta. Now, it's doing 10 revs, and it's doing that in 8 seconds. So your angular velocity could be 1.25 revs per second. Nothing wrong with that. It's doing 1.25 revolutions per second. That is... That is an acceptable way of writing what the angular velocity is. What about the distance travelled by this mass in the circle? Well, if it travels 10 revolutions, then we have to work out the circumference of the circle. So, moving down a wee bit. Circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times the radius. If you don't know that, it's time to go back to the National 5 Maths. Now, there we have the crux of the matter. Whenever you work out the circumference of a circle, you introduce a factor of 2 pi. Because 2 pi times the radius gives you the distance around the circle. In this case, that would be 2 times pi times the radius.
gives us 0 0.6. So calculate 2 times pi times 0 0.6. 3.77 Now pi obviously being an infinite number of decimal places means you've got to watch your rounding here so I'm going to go 3.77 Now that's in metres Why is that in metres? Because my radius was in metres Oops, should have had a wee R in there And it's done 10 revolutions so therefore the distance gone the distance travelled is going to be 3.77 times 10 is 37.7 metres. Final part of the question, what is the speed of the mass? How fast is it moving? I mean, it's called tangential speed because that wee mass, no matter at what point you look at it, if it was round here, it's going that way. If it was here, it's going that way. It's here, it's going that way. It is always travelling. It's instantaneous speed. It's always at a tangent to the circle. If the string was to break, it would fly off in a straight line. It's Newton's first law. So the tangential speed of the mass, that's just speed equals distance over time. So part D of the question, that was part C. Part D is just distance equals speed times time. So if we want the speed, speed equals distance over time. In fact, that equation there is the linear equivalent of that equation there. That's the angular equation for angular displacement equals, uh, so the angular velocity is angular displacement over time. What distance did it travel? 37.7. It did that in 8 seconds. That was in the question up here. So, 37.7 divided by 8 is 4.7. 4.71 meters per second. Did we use radians anywhere? No. Do we need to use radians anywhere? No, we don't. But radians will make your life an awful lot easier for carrying out questions or problems in circular motion. Why is that? We need to talk about the radian. If we draw a circle, if we take that radius and we stretch out an arc of the circle, that is exactly equal to the radius, then the angle that we get is one radian. One radian is the angle that you get when the radius is the same as the arc length. And because there are two pi radiuses around the circumference, there are two pi radians in a circle. You might want to pause that and watch that again. Here it is again. If we take the radius, and we draw a circle, and we stretch an arc of the circle that is equal to the radius, then the angle that's produced is equal to one radian. Here's two radians, because there are two radiuses. Here's three radiuses. And you get 3.14 radiuses around half a circle. That's pi radiuses. In a complete circle, you get 2 pi radiuses around the circle. So 2 pi radians is the total angle in a circle. And you might need to look over that again. So the radian is the angle in a circle when the arc length is equal to the radius. There it is again. So that green angle is one radian. And because there are two pi radiuses in a circle, there are two pi radians. This, this radian is an angle. 
there's two pi radians in a circle because the circumference is two pi radiuses. If you want it in degrees, because a complete circle is 360, and there's two pi radians in a circle, 360 divided by two pi is 57.3 degrees. Right? What do we mean by angle of displacement? is simply a measure of the angle that you have turned through. And if we measure that in radians, a complete circle will be 2 pi radians. Now, that gives us a very useful relationship. If you know the angle that you've turned through, this theta here is the angle in radians then all you have to do is multiply by the radius that you are at and you will get the total distance that you've moved through. And the reason for that is that if your angle that you turn through is 2 pi radians, then the distance that you turn through will be 2 pi times the radius, which is the circumference. Here's a big example. Might make it simpler. If you've got a bicycle wheel and it's got a radius of 0.4 meters, what distance will a point on the rim travel if the wheel travels through five revolutions? Well, five revolutions, if I've got another example, 22 and a half, but let's do the first one first. If you travel through five revolutions, then that would be two pi radians, which is one revolution, times 5 is 10 pi times 0.4. If you do that in your calculator, 12.6. Similarly, 22 and a half revolutions, 22 and a half times 2 pi will give you the angle of displacement. Multiply that by 0.4, you get 56.5. That equation S equals theta r can also be used in reverse. If you want to work out what the angular displacement is, theta, well, theta equals S over r, where S is the total distance that you've covered. So 100 divided by 0.4 means you've turned through 250 radians. Again, you can pause that and then try that on a bit of paper. So the distance that you turn through is related to the angle that you turn through. If the angle is measured in radians, and you know the radius of the circle. What about angular velocity? Well, angular velocity is just like linear velocity. It's linear velocity is speed equals distance over time. Well, angular velocity is the angle that you turn through divided by time. Now, instead of measuring angular velocity in revs per minute, you should really measure it in radians per second. We have to use radians per second. So there are two pi radians in a circle, 60 seconds in a minute. So to convert revs per minute into radians per second, you multiply by two pi, because there's two pi radians in a revolution and divide by 60. That will give you revs per minute in radians per second. Again, I can pause here, and you can work out what 45 RPM is. 45 times 2 pi divided by 60, or 3000 RPM, or 3000 times 2 pi divided by 60, and you'll get both of them in radians per second. So, just like speed equals distance over time, angular velocity is the angle that you turn through. It's the change in your angle over the change in your time. So because angles in radians and time is in seconds, it's in radians per second. Now, tangential speed is the speed that an object is going at around a circle. And the tangential speed of an object 
is simply its angular velocity times the radius. So if you know what its angular velocity is in radians per second, multiply by the radius and you get the speed that it's going at, at a tangent to the circle. That's in meters per second. That's in radians per second. That's in meters. Already showed you a video of two coins on a record. And this is really the key point. If this record is turning at 45 revs per minute, then both of those coins will complete one revolution in the same time. They have the same angular velocity, 45 revs per minute, which corresponds to 4.7 radians per second. They both have the same angular velocity. But which coin is moving faster? Which one's got the greater tangential speed? It's coin C, because it travels a greater distance in the same time as coin A travels a smaller distance. So if you work out speed equals distance over time, they both take the same time to complete one circle, but coin C travels a greater distance. So, they both have a tan uh, an angular velocity of 4.7, but if you work out the velocity of each coin, V equals omega R, or speed equals distance over time, if you don't like the radians, the speed of coin A is 0.28, the speed of coin C is 0.61. Coin C is moving faster although they both have the same angular velocity. 